Right everyone, so we are back to do a new update on Charlie's vlog. I'm sorry it's been a little while since I've last done one and that's because most of the time I'm moving all the time so it's making it harder and harder to film. So in this session I'm going to try and show you a few little drills. So some hunting and some picking and spitting, some marking retrieves, telling him to leave that, turning around and setting him for some partial memories and blinds. I'm also going to get you a bit of footage of him hunting whilst we're out and I'm hopefully also going to show you a bit more advanced handling, basically increasing the distances out that the dog is from the retrieves and, that I, and the distance that I am from him. Right, so there's a little corner of a change of surface up there and I've already pre-planted two retrieves up there. I'm going to be giving him a scene as the first one to prompt him for that's going to be the direction of our memory blind retrieve. I'm going to try and do some hunting here. I'm going to be throwing a retrieve, Billy, Charlie, sit. I'm going to be throwing a retrieve off a find and then sort of mixing that all together, hopefully with a bit of luck. So we're going to go out and get ourselves going. Yeah. So I've actually got a ball in my pocket, which I'm going to use to get him to hunt as well. So with a bit of luck, we'll, uh, we'll get it down without him seeing. Um, we'll let him pick it up. I'll make him spit it out in the stop whistle, give him a mark retrieve and go from there. Charlie? So what I'm doing here is making him hunt to find the retrieve, spitting it out on the stop whistle to simulate a flush, then throwing a marked retrieve, which I then choose to pick or not. Great. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Charlie, Charlie, hit. Good boy. Dead. Heel. Sit. Good boy. So this is going to be his mark retrieve now. So I'm going to put that out in the corner, you'll see. So that's one I'm going to be sending him for, which is effectively going to be our memory retrieve. But I'm going to give him a scene. First. So I'm getting a scene ready in my pocket, ready to go. Here we go. Good luck. So that's our scene. I'm now going to call him in to me. I always want to walk him away from that spot. So I'm going to walk him at heel, sit him up, sit, sleep. Good boy. So he ran in a nice straight line for that, which is what I wanted. And take the pace off him, take the retrieve. Good boy, sit. So we've now got a scene over there, so I'm going to send him for that. Good Just had to do a little bit of handling there. This retrieve obviously is not so easy to see, so I'm going to take it off him, sit him up. He's full of beans today, which is lovely. I'm going to pull him back a little bit. Actually, have I still left my ball out? Sit. Have a look for where my ball is. There it is, so I'm going to pick that up. I'm going to kick it about in front of him a little bit, just to put a bit more scent down. Make him think that that's what he's hunting for. Good lad. Good lad. So I'm going to take my mark retrieve out. This time I'm going to use the white one. It's not about necessarily throwing it a long way. It's about the complication of the drill. So I'm going to call him towards me. Heel. So we're going to go into that top corner again. Right. Good boy. Good lad. Good boy. Take the pace off him. Good boy, sit. Good lad. So that's going back in my pocket. So we've got one more out there. I'm going to pick up my rabbit ball that's here. I'm also going to say heel, 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 here, sit. I'm going to set him for the white one. Good boy. So this white one is really only serving as a purpose to distract him from thinking everything that he sees go down is what he has to pick. And then I'm giving him that retrieve up there, which is a memory or partial blind. So I'm going to put that dummy there ready again. 
I want to make sure I've got my rabbit ball ready to go. I'm just going to kick this down again. Just makes him think that there's something there. But if I left it down straight away, find it so quick, he wouldn't get chance to hunt. Why are you lying down, Charlie? Sit. Ready? Ready. Ready, ready, ready. Come a bit closer this time. I prefer to do this in longer grass because then he couldn't see the retrieve. I'm going to send him for that one. I don't think you'll see that on camera. That was a reasonably long way. Good boy, well done. Good boy. Uh, 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 uh. Hold, hold. Oh, that's not very neat of me, is it? Sit. Okay, so we're going to do one more like that. Sit, I've still got one out there. I'm going to walk him back a bit here, just so that I can hunt him. Normally, sit. Normally I'd be traveling doing this, so this is why I'm doing static so you can see, but normally I'd be traveling down a piece of ground to do this. I'm going to kick this around again. Sit. Getting a bit fruity. So make him think that that's down. Bit of leaf litter. Look at him lying down again. Classic. Chuck that down. Hunt him onto it. Now that's more difficult because it's in the rough same direction as that other one over there. So leave that, sit, heel. I'm still gonna walk him away from this one just to get past it, sit, right. Right. There's loads of thistles on the left now. I didn't want him to run onto those then. Good boy. Good boys. Here. Sit. So I'm going to pick the white one. Sleep. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Dead. Sit. Right. Let's go to the camera, Charlie. Sit. I'm going to pick my ball up. Charlie, heel. Heel. Yeah. Sit. So as I said, that's the sort of routine that I will do. Find one, mark one, leave that, pick a memory, really trying to mix that up a bit now. Like I said, I wouldn't normally train here because the ground's not great. Um, but to show you on camera, I think it served its purpose. Hopefully we're gonna do some handling a bit later on. I'm also gonna show you some hunting in the woods, hopefully to give you a, more, uh, a better perspective on how it's hunting and how I'm moving on that. So we'll catch you in a second. Cool. Right, so here we are. It's always very difficult getting footage of a hunting dog whilst you're moving, but I managed to capture some footage here where you can see he's working very, very hard to try and find some game. Um, he's got his head down nice and tight to the ground, that tail's going, which is what I'm looking for, turning him sharp on the whistle. Now in a moment here, we are about to find bang two hembers. Now you'll notice there he sat up of his own accord. No stop whistle. That's how I like to train at the beginning. I then recast him off with the hump whistle and off we go again. Lots of nice tidy pace allowing him to explore that scent. I don't worry too much about having a perfect pattern at this point. It's more about trying to encourage that hunting drive and the ability to find the game. Charlie will be hopefully at stud from this spring, late spring 2024. So if you have a smart bitch that you're looking to cover, uh, Charlie is going to be available. So keep an eye on our Facebook page, Win Hocklin stud, uh, stud Dogs, where I will be posting plenty of footage of him in the coming season coming. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little bit of hunting footage. So since starting to make this video, I have actually started shooting over Charlie. He's been amazing. I don't actually have any footage because I haven't mastered the dark art of filming, shooting and handling a dog at the same time. But if I do get any footage in the future, I will add it as part of a vlog. 
Right, so we're back to do some slightly longer distance handling here. You'll notice me using a much smaller dummy now. I'm not using a high-vis dummy, and that's because I don't want him to use his eye so much. Not that he's necessarily going to be hunting the retrieve out, but I'm now trying to test whether he understands true left, right, and back. So he turned nicely and ran in a nice straight line. Now at the beginning, I'm always doing this with a high-vis dummy because I want the dog to get in the habit of turning that perfect 90 or 180. Sitting him up with a nice bit of distance here, we're pushing true 90 left. We're gonna be doing true 90 right as well. So nice 90 degree angles. I'm always making sure the dog is sat up in the perfect position, facing me directly, that's really important. See, I'm throwing those retrieves a decent distance now. And I'm also walking back a decent distance. Now, normally I would be doing this out in some woodland or in a bit of longer cover, but to show you on camera, that's what I'm doing it in this field. I would still do it in this field, but it is much clearer for you to watch here. So I'm making sure those dummies are going out in a nice 90 degree angle from him. That's super important. So the other thing that I'm not doing at the moment is distance I am is the critical part from him, not so much what he is from the dog, sorry, what he is from the retrieve. And he can't see the retrieves when I push him left or right, he knows there's one out there. But where I've done all my high vis work, I've now progressed to this stage where it's a lot harder. So basically in the early stages, you're building the dog's confidence and that comes off the dog always finding the retrieve in the same spot every time relevant to their position based off you, which is why I'm so critical at the beginning of making sure that dog is absolutely facing me straight. So that dog learns to run in the straight line and always find the retrieve. And the mark retrieve is what makes the dog then do that. As you get further and further away from the dog, those hand signals become more and more diluted. And getting a dog to go back with the right or left hand at a real distance becomes a lot more difficult. Same in the left right, making sure that a dog goes true left and right. line to guide the dog anymore I'm out in the middle of a field there's no lines to adhere to and again that makes it a lot more difficult right well I really hope you enjoyed this episode this latest episode of Charlie's vlog as I said earlier I'm really sorry it's taken me quite some time I've actually made this video over quite a few weeks with different parts in between just remember it's very repetitive at this point. So all the training that you've seen me doing probably for the last three or four months, it's only changing very, very gradually now, making some things slightly more complicated and pushing them on in other areas and pushing the distances out, putting them under a little bit more pressure, but pretty much they're all the same things I'm doing over and over again. And so that's why you won't get so many vlogs later on as the dog gets into its training, because I would just be showing you me doing the same stuff again and again and again and that'll be the same way for the next 18 months and Charlie's going to carry on developing and I have to make sure that I keep my training up with his development although it probably nothing massive will happen in one massive leap it's important I keep the pressure on make sure I keep handling him make sure I keep him steady since um, I started making this video a little while back I've actually already started shooting the odd bird for him just trying to capitalize on the end of the season to give him a bit of experience it's going to take most dogs about a year to 18 months even from a sort of uh, a 10 to 12 month of age for them to join all those dots up in that training so it's really important that you keep that training up because that dog once it does join those dogs up, uh, those dots up i.e finding a bird flushing it seeing it go out maybe it getting shot maybe it's just in the beating line and it going away all those dots will join up and that's when your dog can start going wrong and for a lot of people that would be towards the middle middle of the season maybe towards the end of the season with the dog and you've just got to make sure you keep that pressure on that dog all the time so you don't regress you want to keep progressing and as soon as you just start relaxing into thinking i'm done that's when you can get yourself caught out so just be very very mindful of that a few more episodes of um billy to come 
I will do some more episodes with Charlie, but they're probably going to be a bit more sparing now just because, um, as I said, not an awful lot's changing. Anyway, I hope this video has been useful. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Any questions, stick them in the description below. Happy training, guys.